Now who are who the cat drag back? I have a life update for you and it is a happy one. It's a happy one. But in order to get to this point, I had to go through some stress. And I sense a lot of your distress in the comment section of one of my past videos. It is a video where we address some of the rumors, some of the controversy, some of the changes that we have seen, literally, in my hair. And what happened was, ironically, I stopped coloring my hair and suddenly it wasn't as curly. You see, for anyone that's new here, I am Mel, your main girl. I have been creating on YouTube for five years, and for four of them, I was very blonde. But since I decided to go back to my natural a little over a year ago, my curl pattern seems to have loosened. And when I addressed these hair changes in a previous video, I had a lot of people talking about the changes that their own texture has made, as well as a lot of questions regarding why this may be. And so I wanted to sit down, chit chat, and answer some of your questions about changing hair texture. While I style my hair, of course, you will get to see the new color by the end of this video. It is wet right now, but don't let it deceive you. It's a little different. It's a little different. And it's a little drier. So we're going to get into my prep. And the first question. Okay, like I was saying, we are hydrating, rehydrating, rehydrating. I know you can't see it now, but what I have done is some lightening in my hair. Now, because of that, I've already put in my K18, and now I'm using my Olaplex. I love the number six. Always have. I think I always will. This is the Bond Smooth. Where did that go? All on the flow. Hold on, because do you actually think I'm going to waste Olaplex? I don't know what's on the flow, but I don't care no more. We're just gonna pay better attention here. So I'm putting some of this in my hair. It's a rich, beautiful, luxurious cream. And this is gonna help fill in the cracks of my cuticle that are going to be extra dry after lightening. So let's answer one more question regarding me. Because Patty asks if I stopped bleaching and lightening and coloring because it was damaging. And how was I able to have my natural color back so fast after bleaching? Magic sounds magic! So my only reason for going back to my natural color, or rather closer to it, which it grows out brunette, it took me a long time to accept that. Let me tell you, as a natural born blonde, I kept my hair blonde for almost six years because I felt like me. But eventually I got to the point where I felt like I was just fighting me, I was tired of fighting the roots, I was just tired of the upkeep, and I just felt like I was going through a period of my life where I'm just embracing more of my natural beauty. And if I'm being honest, natural colors were trending. So I said, let's go back to black. That's how it feels, at least, when you color your blonde hair darker. It's a jump scare when you first see it, I'm not gonna lie. And I will be honest when I tell you that lightening your hair does not have to be damaging with an asterisk because this requires some nuance. Any chemical service that you do on your hair, that includes lightening, bleaching, coloring, perming, a chemical service will permanently alter the chemical structure in your hair and that is going to cause damage. But in the right hands, this is done on a molecular level and you can't actually see the damage. All you need to see is that your curl pattern has not been altered. Altered unfavorably, that is. In favor of your curl pattern, a little damage could do you good. It could increase your porosity, which means your hair will welcome in more moisture. It'll also give your hair more texture so it will hold better and your hair can look and feel much fuller with color, with lightening the hair. And so since I stopped doing that, my hair became so healthy, so soft, like too soft, it wasn't holding styles without a ton of texture spray. And the rest is history, you get the gist of it. But that mostly only started to happen over the last few months because I actually cut off most of my old color. There was still bleached hair under there. I had just put dark color over it. And so once I cut most of that off because I cut my hair shorter, I just felt like my hair was missing something. And that was bringing back some of the damaging. I have always been in favor of adding color to curls, especially to just give your hair a little extra dimension, some multi-tones to give your hair some extra texture, depth and richness. The only thing is this hair is gonna require more maintenance and be prone to fading, so I'm making sure that I'm using products with heat and UV protection. So I'm going in with a little bit of the Abeta Nutriplenish Leave-In Conditioner. Leave-In conditioners are important on hair that has been color treated because during the lightening process, we are depleting the hair of its natural lipids, its moisture content, and likely also its protein. So we need to supplement this in our routine. I kind of already answered the next question, but it was, can healthier hair also feel thinner? And the answer is yes. 
The process of lightening your strands will cause them to swell, which will make them feel a little bit thicker, a little bit fatter. You'll feel more texture. The hair will hold its volume better. Okay, now that we've addressed how color can actually enhance your texture, a lot of the rest of these questions are about getting back your texture, texture changes due to hormones, as well as natural color textures like gray. So this was a question from Lena. She's experimenting with going curly due to suspicions that her hair isn't actually straight. Oh, it is the season for my wavies to let the hair breathe. But she's asking, how should fine straight hair look when you first start to go curly? How fast does it usually take for curls to set and stay in? Everyone's timeline is going to look different when it comes to getting your curls back. And it's all gonna depend on how badly you were treating your hair beforehand. So if you've always been treating your hair like straight hair, for example, brushing it out when it's wet to keep it kind of straight-ish when it's dry, or in addition to that, using a lot of heat styling, there's gonna be a substantial amount of damage that's on your hair and it will take a while to get your curl back. But the best type of treatments that you can use to get your curl back are both K18, Olaplex, and I always reference these two because they're the only ones that are really proven to help with hair damage and restructuring the hair's pattern. But at this point, there's a lot of strengthening and bonding treatments that will help to reconstruct your hair back to its curly state or wavy state. Sometimes you just need to let it be and let these things grow out. One of the best ways to remove extra damage from your hair without removing length is in fact to get layers. But Jaslyn asks, did anyone else's hair get less curly after layers or just me? Whew. Texture after layers, the T. The reality is looser curl textures and waves need a little extra length in order to actually curl. While they can create body as they create a shape, this mostly applies, apply, 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 apply. This mostly applies to hair with more natural body and tighter texture, but it doesn't work like that for everybody. It's like a chocolate waterfall. Honestly, I just, Hold on, I didn't want to spoil the color for you. Let me just put my gel on, please. Thank you. I'm going with a little Aveda day. Taking some gelay. And I guess we're brushing this through today because I, I, mean, I didn't apply it this way on the bottom, but that's okay. As I was saying, what layers do is remove weight. Sometimes this takes out too much body from the hair. And going back to my previous point, you might be cutting off the damaged parts of your hair, which are giving you some of that enhanced texture so did the layers get rid of the curl or did they just leave behind really healthy hair that doesn't want to curl as well because they need a little bit of damage in there slash they aren't the right length for your hair's texture to thrive and to actually form a full curl just some food for thought you know and if you are wondering how can i damage my hair at home <laughs> Please don't, but I mean also, use a shampoo with a high pH. Okay. We could all use a little clarifying, and I do love the Malibu C Undo Goo pH 9 shampoo. The pH 9 will kind of lift the cuticle a little bit, and it'll kind of rough up the strands. It'll cause them to swell a little bit. A high pH, a high alkaline environment for the hair does cause some damage in there, and so it'll be very subtle. It won't actually change your color, but using that often can, can, I mean, in theory, do some damage. And if you want to just not care about your hair in the sun, then go bug wild. Live a little. Heck, swim a little. Or just use products with some salt in them, some magnesium sulfates. That will help both dry out the hair in a good way and enhance your texture. We did a whole video on that, and that's what I was using almost every time I washed my hair to get a little extra texture from the curl when it was really, really too healthy. Although it's something that I'm trying to avoid now as my hair, especially right after color, uh, is, is feeling a little dry. It's feeling, it's feeling the effects of the lightning. So we're just gonna ease off that for a sec. Next question, Alina says, Lena and Alina, is it Alina? Does anyone else have a completely different curl texture on the bottom of their head? How you can actually style multiple textures on your head. So specifically, Alina is dealing with uh, the nape area, which is the section just above your neck. And what you will notice if you look at the profile of your skull and scalp, the hair under there is growing out of your head in a different direction. These turning points on the head are often very likely to be a different hair texture. We also notice different textures in the crown section of your head, which is right at the 
top there. We may notice a different texture kind of above the ear here. I have that a little bit. And also the hair that is around our front hairline. This hair is typically finer and sometimes it's looser. In my case, it's tighter up here. Now, having multiple textures dispersed throughout your head makes things a little bit more difficult. The best way to manage this is to actually get your hair cut to suit that. So a curl by curl dry cut will, will work best for that. When it is a really big section, I do recommend isolating it and styling it differently. If you would like it to match the rest of your head, try setting that section of your hair with rollers. Rollers come in all kinds of varieties. The easiest would be using flexi rods. You could use perm rods as well, or you could even pin curl. But in the case of Alina, where the texture is actually tighter under there and you want it to match the rest of your head, I would recommend braiding that section. The amount of braids you put will depend on how tight you want them to be. Make one big braid if you need it to be looser. That would be the easiest way to kind of get the nape to cooperate. You know what I'm saying? Now, I think it's time I act my age. That's going to be the theme of some of the next questions that I want to answer, but I also need to dry diffuse my hair. And a lot of you have been asking to see how I diffuse my hair, even though I have several videos on it. A lot of you want to see the actual process. You're saying it gets cut out in most videos when I'm styling. So I'm going to sit here and film the full process for you and we'll continue answering questions with the voiceover. Can you hear me? The mic is on and the mic is good. If I get one more complaint about the sound under my videos, listen, the problem isn't the mic. The problem is that I am operating in a washroom, a loo, if you will. So please excuse me and I'm going to get diffusing. I am using my Dyson Supersonic and diffuser attachment. I'm going to start flipped over. Let's answer some questions from our curly silver sisters. Because as we age, when our color changes, it's very common for our texture to change as well. It may feel thin and wiry or coarse and super dry. And part of the reason why is because as we age, our body slows down the production of tyrosine, which is an amino acid that is responsible for the pigmentation in our hair and our body. Now there are typically two phases the hair will go through as we age in reference to our grays because there is gray hair and then there is white hair. To make up for the lack of pigment, the hair starts to build up more cuticle layers. That is why the hair can feel extra coarse, a little bit thicker, but more wiry and especially resistant to color. Then slowly as the production of melanin completely stops, you are left with white hair in the white stage. And this hair is prone to being very porous. It's lacking all the melanin. It's no longer building up cuticle. It can feel very fine, thin, and brittle. But by coloring the hair and adding pigment into it, you can make the hair more manageable. And in some cases, even healthier, or at least it may feel healthier. I think what starts to happen a lot as well is once people go gray, they think, oh, there's no more maintenance to do with our hair. But the hair still needs to be maintained, protected from heat, protected from UV, proper shampooing and conditioning. So without all that, your texture may take a hit. Now, if you really don't want to maintain your hair and you don't want to color it because you love your grays, now I'm not a doctor and I'm not diagnosing you, but I will advise you to see a doctor or dietitian, someone to help make sure that your diet is sufficient. Make sure you're getting your protein in. Supplementing with L-tyrosine, might help prevent your hair from going gray. But as for the curl change, if you are considering perming sections of your hair that are a completely different texture, that is totally an option. If your hair is in a healthy state and it's something that's really bothering you, you can absolutely spot perm different sections of your head. Product wise, because the hair starts to get really finicky, to prevent any excess damage from happening, I would recommend one, investing in a shower head filter. These will help filter out chlorine that's in your water. That can both affect your hair color and the health of your hair. And then definitely a good leave-in that's gonna help moisturize your hair. If you're not struggling with moisture, but your hair has become very fine and limp, I recommend getting an acidifier. These are treatments that are slightly different from a conditioner. In regards to hormones, particularly those with Hashimoto's, this is a disease of the thyroid. This happens when the thyroid is very underactive, it's not working properly, and one of the side effects of this is a low lipid content in the hair and skin. So we're talking a lot of dryness. Then make sure you supplement that by using deep moisture treatments, conditioners, and scalp oiling will help as well to keep the hair healthy. This video has been brought to you by the Mains by Mel team launching MainsByMel.com, the one-stop blog spot to search and destroy. 
I mean search and find all the answers to your questions in one convenient place. Just take a look through the blog. And if you're considering buying a product but you're not sure if it's gonna work for you, check out Mel's who, what, when, where, and why on the products she uses most. You can find Mel's discount codes, video tutorials, and know when there is a new event and launch coming if you sign up for the newsletter. You'll also be automatically entered into a draw for a monthly giveaway. So what do you say? Head over to mainsbymel.com today. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I am staying forward like this, not because it's going to help with volume, but because I don't think I can move my back. Serum! That's the, that's the serum for me. I'm smoothing. Da -da -da. Hair feels amazing. Isn't that freaking stunning? Yes, this is my color reveal, which, full transparency, I have lost all day light. It's bad lighting in here, but we have in fact done some lightening in here. And I've got some body in here. I want to remind you that my hair is actually on the finer side. And if your hair is very fine and you're feeling like it's very limp as well, if your hair is limp because it is very healthy, I want to de-influence you from using deep conditioners and moisturizers on your hair that are causing it to be extra limp. Use products with a low pH, avoid too many humectants like glycerin, and avoid using a conditioner that is too moisturizing. For limp hair, you need to acidify. This will not only add body back to your hair, but it will add shine, and it can also help act as a detangler. Acidifiers don't do much to condition the hair, but they will help to lower the pH, kind of decrease the swelling, add shine back to the cuticle, which will make things easier to detangle, and, and it's part of the reason why apple cider vinegar rinses are so popular. But we can talk more about that in another video. I wanted to leave you with one of the most important things to check if you've noticed the hair change, particularly if you have been moving, check your hard water. It affects over 80% of people in North America. It is a very common condition, which over time, if not treated or not cleansed properly or filtered out, minerals that are in hard water will build up on the hair, preventing the absorption of moisture. This will lead to a lot of dryness, a lot of brittleness, and that's just not gonna let your curl shine and thrive. And it can also cause a lot of issues on the scalp and cause issues when it comes to hair growth as well as hair fallout. So it's a good idea and a fun little activity to search up your area code and your water hardness to figure out where you live on the scale. You can also check for scaling on your faucets and your shower heads. You will often be able to see white calcium buildup. That's building up on your hairs too. So I recommend you get you a shower head filter. These will help to filter out chlorine as well as get a shampoo that is chelating and use it every so often. I can put my recommendations in the description box below, but this whole topic here, hard water, is one of the first things that I ask and I investigate when someone tells me that their hair seems to be changing. And while it's the first thing I ask, it's the last thing I'm gonna answer in this video. I have got to go. I don't even have a full face of makeup on right now. Can you see my eyelashes? They're completely bare under here. So whether your curl pattern is changing or it's different in different areas on your head, Thanks a lot. The easiest thing you can do is embrace it. And I wanna reassure you that there is almost always a solution to your hair's struggles and a way to make your styling work for you instead of working against it. I hope that I've encouraged you to face it. If you want more tips and tricks and you haven't already subscribed to me, make sure that you do because we're all about sharing healthy hair tips backed by professionals and science by a stylist and a studying trichologist, and we put out new videos every week. Also, you need to now follow along my journey to see if the hypothesis is correct. Honestly, I feel like my hair is already looking a little curlier, but we'll monitor how it continues looking. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace. Well, look who the cat dragged back. Some of you may cry, but that's a sacrifice. There is no sacrifice. There is only salute. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice Lord Farquaad is willing to make. The irony in that statement is my absolute favorite and I love him. Do you think that he's a short king? Lord Farquaad, of course. Yeah, you know, for me, no, not for me. Here we go. So I made a rash decision. So I made a rash decision and it's giving me a rash. I don't know if you can see it.
No, I feel like the lighting is shit. Oops, oops, oops. I did it again. I colored my hair even though I said I was growing it all out. But wait, you gotta hear me. My hair was not happy. Actually, it was too healthy. What's good, everybody? It's your main girl Mel back at it again with another video. And I went, I went, when I went, when I how when I actually I need to scrunch this section really quickly. Okay. Yummy, juicy. I said, are you hearing this thing? Oh no, something in there is looking frizzier than I wanted to. A vagina. Sorry, everybody. My intrusive thoughts are taking over again. I want to grab a book to read. I can't grab my phone because it's on a tripod filming and I can't move it. So I'm, gra I'm grabbing a book. I need some entertainment. Sing to me, Achilles. Contrary to popular belief, I am staying forward like this, not because it's gonna help with volume, but because I don't think I can move my back. Peesha. Peesha, pee, peesha. Peesha, pee squaw, pee fob. Oh, by the way, actually, the next couple of videos, if you are continuing to watch with me, um, my hair might look different because a few of the videos will be pre-recorded as I am actually going to be Let me know if you want a video on packing. Let me know if you want a video on packing and kind of traveling hair routine. Although I have a few vlogs already up on the channel that you can see. And that's about it. Alright. Peace. I'm so tired. What time is it? It's 11.17. I might like this.